Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your tarot reading. So, um, when I was shuffling out this spread for you, um, I saw a very distinct image and it was like, um, in very vivid colors. Okay. So it seems like modern day, really, um, strong, vibrant, vivid colors. Um, I see like a hand of a person. It looks like a, a woman's hand. She's like crushing up some, um, uh, eggshells. She's crushing them up and she's using them. She crushes them up, puts them into like a little, uh, basket, like a woven basket. She takes them out into her garden. So I can't see her face. I'm only seeing her hands and you know, the, the environment that she's in. She takes that little basket into the garden and she scatters it on the ground. And so she has like some plants growing on the ground and then she starts to walk over the eggshells okay she's stepping onto the eggshells to kind of um, get it packed into the ground so that's the scene she has a very lush vibrant garden she wants to keep it alive and she wants to maintain it and she wants to take care of it and so she's giving it nutrients whatever nutrients calcium um, whatever micronutrients you get from eggshells that's what she wants to impart onto the ground so that the um, the soil would be a lot more fertile so that everything that she's planted would grow, okay? So when I saw this image, um, I was thinking about potentially two, it's like a double meaning here. The first image is all about nurturing, is all about, you know, taking care of something, tending to your garden, tending to the things in your life that have long-term sustainable value. And that also has, you know, monetary gains as well. So that's the first thing. And then the second, uh, I guess, meaning associated with that is like walking on eggshells. Okay. Which normally means it's a situation that can be potentially volatile. It can, uh, the, the situation itself could be very, very delicate. So you're careful about where you are treading. And so the term walking around on eggshells. It means you have to watch what you say. It means that you have to be a little bit crafty about what you say and how you say it so that it doesn't, I guess, uh, create misunderstandings and then it doesn't also trigger things in other people or in the environment that you're in, okay? So there's like a double meaning here. So first of all, I just want to get the obvious out of the way. Uh, you have two cards here that denote a lot of financial stability, okay? So it, it's clearly coming in. So for those of you who have been, you know, worried or um, a little bit, um, I want to say like um, concern when it comes to financial resources, I feel that things are really releasing, okay? So the 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 drainage valve or, or something like the floodgate is really opening up when it comes to your financial situation which is looking to be very good. So first of all, we have here the 10 of pentacles. And then we also have the king of pentacles. These two cards in conjunction uh, to one another or appearing in tandem, it usually denotes a situation where there is an escalation when it comes to your financial resources. For some of you, you might have recently gotten a raise or you might be promised a raise. I feel like there might have been some uh, hang-ups when it comes to this uh, financial abundance, but the month of February is when things get released, okay? So literally, there's like, um, I'm, I'm hearing here a, a release of the floodgates so that financial abundance can come through. And if we look at this card, um, the, the water is dwindling here, right? So the um, crocodile alligator, it's going back into the water source. And with this connotation, I feel like it just means, you know, the rains are coming. The time of abundance is, um, is coming into your life. You're no longer living in a dry, parched, um, scarce environment. I feel that, you know, scarcity is um, being kind of like, it, it's scarcity is moving into the past and i feel like this can be emotional scarcity financial scarcity for uh, specifically for the way this card is coming out where there's going to be a lot more water flowing in there's going to be a lot more abundance there's there will be things that are thriving and growing and coming back in to replenish this dry parched scorch 
environment so that you're no longer going to live in a space of dryness and scarcity okay um alligators can stay underwater for a very long period of time before they need to come up for air and so i feel like this might have been a situation that was subsisting it, it, it existed for quite some time and i feel that you know you were biding your time you were waiting for the rains to come you were waiting for that abundance to come into your life and i feel the month of february something triggers it and i feel it has a lot to do with um the planetary placement because now we are moving into an air sign of aquarius for the month of february and aquarius is a fellow air sign so basically there's planetary placements um when the sun is in aquarius it's going to trine it's going to make a very good placement to your sign and so as a result of that i feel that you know you you have some blessings coming through for this month okay so whatever financial resources you've been uh, waiting on we have here the hangman and this is a state of um, waiting a state of um, suspension a situation where there has been some type of a hold up some something is like tied into the works and it's not being released so i feel like for many of you this could be physically property uh, trying to release a property like sell a property so that you can move into another property trying to finalize a sale and there might have been some type of contractual hang-ups and I feel like for the month of February things are clearing up um, the, the the way is paved for you so that you can you know achieve this financial abundance or this financial windfall that's coming through and with this king of pentacles imagery this is a depiction of somebody who's escalating when it comes to their career when it comes to their professional life when it comes to the income generating um projects or whatever it is they're taking on this is somebody who's like a boss okay who who tells people what to do when to do it who oversees other people who um i guess as well um they they don't need to lift a finger so i feel like you guys are in kind of this position you don't need to lift a finger you don't need to do the hard labor you don't need to you know get your hands dirty you're telling other people what to do you're um, making these executive decisions and other people are coming to you and you know um i guess like uh you're appointing or you're um assigning projects assigning work and you're overseeing the work okay so this is a somebody who is in a managerial role who's in the upper echelon of either a company an organization or even someone who's self-employed and as a result of it i feel that you're reaping a lot of benefits as a um as, due to the escalation when it comes to your status when it comes to your professional life when it comes to even pay increases that um that goes along with this change or this escalation in your um professional life okay so we have some really great things coming into the picture so on the money front, on the financial front, um, the month of February is going to be a little bit of a game changer for you. And I just want to say that, you know, with additional responsibility and power, uh, it also comes with, um, I, I guess, like you're going to be heavily in the limelight. Um, people will defer to your judgment. People will, you know, uh, constantly come and ask you for your professional opinion and then people will also put you in um, in really high regards in that they they might have trouble trusting what they think is right and they defer to your judgment and it is really important that your judgment is sound right so it's a it's a little bit of a double-edged sword in that we're thrust into a position of power and so we're in a position where we have to command others we have to lead others we have to steer others the right way and so what we know our knowledge base becomes very important because you you're not in a position where you have to convince other people anymore people are referring to you know your expertise or deferring to your judgment and so you want to make sure that you have the whole story you want to make sure that you are a credible source 
and you want to make sure that whatever you say you can kind of back it up okay not that you have to defend your stance or convince others of your course of action but you just need to make sure that with leadership um, capabilities it comes with a lot of scrutiny as well from you know people who might be working above you people that you're answering to and so you want to make sure that your judgment is sound you want to make sure that every argument that you have is based on logic based on facts and these facts can be backed up can be used as evidence because I do feel like uh, you have to be very very responsible um, towards the people that you're leading towards the people that you're commanding okay so think of it as like you know let's say we're going off to war okay and you're in command of like a thousand soldiers you want to make sure that you utilize your resources well where can I put these soldiers so that we can have like a very efficient victory where can I you know uh, strategically place people or use people so that use not in a bad way but use as in utilize them to the best of their capabilities so that we can achieve visible results so I feel like there's a lot of planning I feel like there's a lot of strategizing that's coming through for this month I feel like manpower might be a little bit scarce and so it's the, the scarcity coming through from this card I feel like manpower might be very scarce so you want to utilize each and every person to the best of your capabilities based on what you know about their strengths and their weaknesses okay so for example um, you wouldn't put a medic on the front lines right you would have him serving in the reserve so that people can come to him for medical treatment if they're wounded right so it's just a matter of knowing the people that you are assigning tasks to knowing what they're really good at and playing up on and utilizing and taking advantage of their skill sets so that you can you know have the outcome that you want or even have the best optimal outcome okay things are never going to be perfect but we want to aim for efficiency and we want to uh, make sure and here's another thing that just came in so I just want to um, talk about it real quickly um, it's about utilizing people based on their strengths and their weaknesses right so for example you probably wouldn't want to put your best friend who's not really good with interacting with people to put him in a position where he has to interact with people okay even though he's your best friend so needless to say I feel like there might be an advice towards you know um, erring on the side of caution when it comes to uh, who you place in the limelight because you might also you know if if all goes well then that's great but if things fail you might be the one facing the scrutiny okay um, so th that's what I'm, I'm seeing here and I feel like you are very good at judging people's character and a lot of the times too you know anytime we are in a, an interpersonal uh, situation with another person whether we like them or whether we don't like them I feel like you know we are always a little bit biased when it comes to our as true assessment of somebody's skills and so just make sure that you know your friendship your interpersonal relationship with someone does not affect the way in which they are utilized in the work environment okay so make sure that you really emphasize uh, someone's strengths and use their strengths accordingly okay so I hope that makes sense I hope that uh, provides you with enough information because I feel like there's room for cronyism here but it doesn't have to be so and um, there's a lot of um, scrutiny from the top down so you want to be a little bit careful okay but finances looks to be very stable I feel that you're going to um, also be on your a-game when it comes to your professional life okay so with that out of the way uh, let's talk about you know walking on eggshells okay so first of all um, I feel like there might have been some type of a, a recent misunderstanding 
um, or like lack of communication or even lack of meaningful communication between you and another person. You say one thing and they misinterpret and think you meant another. Uh, you say, um, or, or like they said something and you misinterpret and you think they meant another. Like it, it, it seems like communication is at, you know, um, like what do they call them? Like, um, it's like crisscrossed. Okay. So communication is not getting through between you and another person. And then I also feel like there's somebody here that might've been a little bit hurt by an interaction in the past that they had with you. And the person, the energy is coming out here as the Queen of Cups. Sorry about that. Um, so I was talking about this card. The person here, um, I have here the Queen of Cups. And this could be a water sign, a Pisces, Cancer, or a Scorpio. Um, I'm not reading the sign so much anymore. What I feel is the energy of this person. I feel like um, this person is deeply very, very, very sensitive. Okay, water signs are incredibly sensitive. Um, but I also feel like, you know, it doesn't even have to be a water sign. I feel like deep down this person is incredibly sensitive. Um, this is a person that likes to take care of other people. Okay. They find joy and contentment when they can be of use, okay? So, like, they're very eager to take care of people. They're very eager to offer a lending hand. They're very eager to, you know, um, offer a shoulder for anyone to, to lean on. So, I feel like, you know, the, they, they might oftentimes have uh, been taken advantage of, okay? So, it's someone who's very caring, who's very loving. Um they're also very deeply emotional and i feel like they have a tough exterior about them okay i'm i'm looking at this i guess seal walrus whatever it is it's um and there's like a, a layer of blubber right underneath the skin so i i think of it as like armor it, it's a necessity because this person has been through a lot and because they're so sensitive that uh, over the years, they've built up this um, tough exterior about them. And they try not to get let things get to them. And I also feel like they might have been, you know, taken advantage of uh, quite a bit by other people because of their kindness. And because of that, they grow thick skin and they're very cautious about who they invest their time in, who they invest their energy in, and who they are, uh, who are the, they're making themselves available to. So this is a person that has been burned one too many times. And as a result of it, they're going into self-preservation mode, okay? Um, the hermit energy. This is highly spiritual energy, okay? And the, uh, the card here, it says contemplation and wisdom. This is somebody who's very wise, like very, very wise. They understand human nature. They understand people's uh, shortcomings. They are a very good judge of character as well. And um, I have a feeling here that there was something said, okay, between you and this person where... I, I, I feel like they might have gotten angry, okay, over something you said, over something that you did. And they might have, like, in in a fit of anger, they might not have sugarcoated what they wanted to say, so it came out wrong. Does that make sense? So it's not like they meant for it to come out that way, but I feel like it just came out wrong. And then I also feel like there might have been an exchange between you and this person. And keep in mind the energy could be vice versa. Because I, I feel like it's the person coming to you. But then again, it could be uh, the energies could be flipped. And I feel like somebody feels like the other person's not doing enough. Not doing enough in a relationship not chipping in, not uh, um, carrying the, the burden of the relationship, childcare, family, um, responsibilities in the home, uh, res like 
I just sense that somebody felt like emotionally um, that they were carrying the weight of the relationship. That's what it feels like to me. And somebody is pointing out these things and I feel like it's a situation that might have um, created a rift between the two of you. I feel like they're upset. And so this whole concept about walking on eggshells, I feel like somebody here, potentially you, you're walking on eggshells with another person and you're biding your time. Um, I'm also sensing that this person, so just keep in mind, um, because the, the way the energy is coming out, I just feel like they have a lot, they, they over the years, they have repressed a lot of things, okay? A lot of things have been repressed under that layer of skin. So they might have felt a lot, but they never said it. They might have held on to resentment. They might have held on to grudges. And I don't feel like this is a petty person. I just feel like in any type of a relationship or interpersonal uh, situation with another person we know too much about the other person there's always going to be grudges held there will always be resentment there will always be like um discontent right but i feel like with this person they've never expressed themselves in the past they've never voiced their opinion they've never uh, i guess like let things go because everything gets trapped under that layer of fat that's what i'm feeling and so it becomes, it can potentially become toxic, okay? It, it, it's like harboring resentment and then rather than talking about it, rather than saying, you know, well, yesterday you did this and I was really unhappy with that. They didn't talk about what happened yesterday. They pick on something else and they want to talk about that when in fact that's not the root of the problem. So I feel like they're addressing symptoms or talking about the symptoms of their discontent or their grudges or, or whatever it is they've been repressing and they're not really addressing the issues. And so when you interact with them, it can be a little bit frustrating. And I, I feel like they know how to kind of poke at you where it hurts or they know what to say that really gets under your skin. There's a whole concept here about, you know, under the skin, getting under the layers and needing to expose things, needing to really talk about things, you know, like talking about, for example, that elephant in the room, rather than walking on eggshells, skirting around the issue, let's just talk about it. Let's just, you know, slice it open and bring it out into the surface and, and talk about it. And, you know heal from it I feel like there has been a lot of back and forth a lot of grudges held a lot of like skirting around issues ignoring issues sweeping things under the rug in your interaction with this person and now it's at a point where things are starting to implode and I just feel like the interaction between the two of you could be a little bit toxic okay and then I'm also feeling like I'm hearing somebody like, you need to do more. You need to own up or you need to, you know, it, it's, it's almost like they want you to change into something that you're not. That's what it feels like to me. The way I'm looking at this, both of these animals can swim they can swim really well okay but they both like to go on land and soak up the sun okay so they're they're pretty much you know um, they can live on land they can live in water but they both need water and so what I'm, I'm feeling is that you know you guys might have a lot of things in common at the very beginning of the relationship like a lot of just innate things in common you can live on land you can live in water you can live in cold climate and you both agree on a lot of things at, at first but the nature of the beast is that you might prefer things a certain way and i feel like because of all of these commonalities this person might see you as an extension of themselves and you as the sign of the twins, you know, you, you, 
I also feel like you see the people you love as an extension of yourself. And so there might be kind of like, you know, false expectations placed upon one another. And it was never talked about. It was never discussed. It was never agreed on. And as a result of it, I feel that one person is just like, you should have done this. And then the other person wants to disengage from the conflict. Possibly you, Gemini, want to disengage from the conflict and, you know, walking on eggshells, wanting the, the, um, wanting the flare up to die down, wanting the tantrum to kind of like go away before you slither back in. And so I feel as if both parties are skirting around the issues and not really addressing the heart of the matter. That's what it, it seems like to me. Um, if you are not in communication with this person, I feel like they're looking at you. Okay, so look at this. It's like sheepishly looking out at the action, but kind of like hiding behind the scenes, okay? So I feel like they're they're looking at your reaction. They're trying to see what you're doing. They're trying to see what you're up to. They're trying to understand you. They're trying to see when you're going to be coming back, either as uh, to apologize or to make amends or even to like, or even to talk, okay? Because I feel like this person is expecting you to come back. And I, I do sense that, you know, there's a, a very strong emotional bond between the two of you, even though you are like, what's weird is um, you feel as if you have a lot in common. You might have the same upbringing. You might have the same family circumstance. You might be from the same, you know, uh, culture, from speaking the same language, uh, having like a lot of similarities when it comes to your upbringing where you have lived and things like that but innately innately you guys are very different okay this is a cold-blooded animal this is a warm-blooded animal and right in the middle we have here the devil and the devil is indicating to me this is a cyclical pattern this is a um this is a an ongoing either an ongoing uh, emotional rift, an ongoing argument, an ongoing uh, pattern and behavior of suppressing things, not talking about things, uh, skirting around the issues. Possibly even I feel like someone might be evasive and not saying what's really on their mind. It could be you or the other person, and then as a result of it, the partner gets confused. The partner doesn't have closure. The partner doesn't have like um, certainty in this connection. And we have as well the Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords is, um, is like a, a rest and restoration phase, but it's also kind of some type of a stoppage when it comes to communication, okay? And so what I'm feeling here is there might have been some hang-ups or like some stoppage in communication. You're not in communication with that person or at least you're not having meaningful communication um, as to what happened in the past. Why are we arguing? Why is there an emotional rift? And I feel like one person is very much wanting the other person to come back. I'm hearing somebody accusing the other person of being like a lazy relationship partner, a lazy friend, um, you know, like not putting in enough of the work. So you know where you stand, okay? Like you could be saying this or they could be saying this, but I feel like one person uh, feels like the other person's not putting in a lot of the work. And I feel like this was very hurtful to hear. And I feel that it's hurtful because I feel like there's some truth to it, right? A lot of the times too, we get defensive um, when things strike us, like uh, strike our, at our heart. Strike at things that we already know, okay? We don't get offensive if they were just false accusation or uh, things that don't have any merit. 
I feel like the, the things that really get our blood boiling is when there's some truth to it. So I feel like, you know, either the other person got defensive because there's some truth to what you're saying, or you might have gotten very defensive, or you might have gotten very hurt because of what they were saying. So either way, I feel like there is um, a lot of room here for reconciliation because there's still, you know, at the heart of it, there's still a lot of love. I feel that you might be the one coming towards the other person to either offer an apology, make amends, or to... I feel that a lot of the times um, with air signs, okay, um, air signs are very much in their head. And so when they're confused or conflicted about a situation, they just won't respond. They, they will just kind of like retreat. They would just go and focus their energy elsewhere because they don't like it when their minds get rattled. And so I feel like you might have gone, you know, you might have done the disappearing act and now you're slithering back into the water, the realm of emotion in order to have a discussion, in order to test the water with another person, in order to kind of like, I'm hearing come back. So someone might be, you know, in order to come back to another person, in order to come back to a situation, you might have taken a rest. And now it's time for you to, um, I guess, like re-enter this discussion, re-enter, re-engage with this person. But I do feel like there is definitely a little bit of a rift in between, okay, with the shadow. Um, so the way this is depicted here, the devil... The shadow it says self-empowerment and ambition okay and self-empowerment and ambition is about really getting to know yourself okay really getting to know like you know maybe what they said maybe there's some truth to it maybe I need to own up to it okay and they vice versa need to also go through a, a stage of self-awareness Maybe I've been suppressing things for so long. Maybe I was really angry at this thing that happened three years ago, when in fact I'm picking on this person for something that they said yesterday. So I feel that there is definitely, um, from their end, a very emotional response to something that you might have said or something you might have done. And then I feel like from your end, there was a retreat, there was like a backing off, there was a confusion, there was a, a, a situation when you were like very emotional, I'm sorry, mentally and emotionally rattled and you didn't know how to respond to it. Or you might have been upset, you might have been angry and you didn't want to feel those feelings and so you retreated. And so there's a emergence, like a coming back together in some capacity between you and this person to allow you to kind of like talk. And the, the, the conversation doesn't flow naturally. I don't see it flowing. I feel like you're still skirting around the issue, walking on eggshells around the other person, very, being very cautious about not triggering the landmines, you know watching what you're saying, watching your words, watching your tone, watching your body language. And I, I do see the other person might be the one that's upset, okay? Um, anyways, I feel like this is worth working on because there's enough commonalities between the two of you to be able to get through this. And I just feel like their emotional response is very different from your emotional response. So it's just a matter of calibrating, getting yourselves on the same page so that you can, you know, talk with each other in a way that is meaningful rather than they're talking over you. I feel like they're talking over you. They're talking about things that they were very upset about that happened three years ago and yet they're picking on something that you're doing in the present time and that's not really fair. And so I feel like, I, I just feel like there's a, there has been a lot of things or events or, or situations that have been bottled up for a very long time. And so when we have this conversation, just know Gemini, and you might not want to hear this, just know that it's not going to be a five minute conversation. It might require, you know, a few hours. 
it might drag on into the next day. And so if you feel yourself getting, you know, uncomfortable or riled up or, or, or the environment gets very tense, take a break and just let them know, you know, we'll resume this conversation tomorrow or over the weekend or next week. That way you both can kind of like in one fell swoop, just take care of this and not let it come up again in the future. Okay, so it's like burying the hatchet so that it doesn't reemerge. And I just feel like the communication has been very poor between the two of you. Okay. Um, so aside from that, um, we do have here another person coming into the picture. Okay, we have here the Wheel of Fortune. And um, the Wheel of Fortune is all about like um, things turning in your favor. Okay, the good karma, the good deeds that you have done will come back home to roost to give you a lot of financial abundance, to give you a major boost when it comes to, you know, your either your love life, your professional life, your financial life. And I do sense that there's going to be a lot of emotional connections that you're making with other people, new friendships coming into the works. Okay, we have here the Three of Cups, and this is like socializing, social dating, meeting people who are very similar to you when it comes to their hobbies, their likes and their dislikes, and finding a community of people that you get really well uh, with, you get along really well with. And for those of you who have been in this hermit phase, okay, not really going out, not really, um, you know, doing recreational things, not meeting friends, and, and there might have been, uh, you might have been very busy, honestly, and you might have been kind of like looking at your social life from afar and letting and watching it pass you by. Um, I feel like there's room here for you to move on, for you to make new connections, to be around a community of people who really get you. The dolphins, these are like very playful creatures, okay? So I feel like the energy is very playful. It's very dynamic. It's also like a lot of traveling, a lot of movement, um, opportunities for those things that are coming into the picture as well. And I also feel like, you know, um, if you need to take a break, do so and kind of like let the work take care of itself. I feel like it's on autopilot right now you've uh, worked really hard and so you really need to you know allow yourself the time and the space to kind of like slither into this water and just kind of coast or you know be effortless for a little bit okay so i feel here there's opportunities for you to do that and especially um, for those of you who might have you know recently broken up or have been single for quite some time and you're just kind of like seeing the people that are passing you by or even like you know socially dating but not really taking it seriously or even being too shy i'm seeing a shyness here with the hermit card with the koala bear um even being too shy to you know really step out of your comfort zone and even dating outside of your type, I feel like there's an abundance of uh, options and choices and things like that coming through. Um, give me just a second. We have the tower and it's about release and revelation. So that's what it says here in this deck. And I want to pull out two more cards just to clarify. It's linked up here with the king of pentacles. And this is an earth sign, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. Um, if they are not an earth sign, this is somebody who's very, very proud. Okay, so I, I think I got it. But let me just... This is somebody who's very, very, very proud, okay? Proud about not admitting when they are at fault. Proud about... Okay, I'm getting a message here. Give me just a second. I need two more cards, please, for the tower. Not apologizing when they are wrong. Okay, so let me talk about this person. So this is kind of like... Um, this is someone who's very regal, who's very proud, 
okay? And um, they're very protective, deeply protective of the things that they love. And uh, I feel that you are interacting with someone like this and they are associated with courage and commitment, okay? So this is someone who's very serious minded, okay? They get things done. They're very reliable. They're very reliable Geminis. Geminis, uh, you might not have a track record of being very reliable. So just so you know, if you're dealing with this person who is all about courage and commitment, the takeaway message is um, you need to be punctual. You need to be on time. You need to be kind of like the man or the woman of your word. You need to be the person that this person can count on, okay? Because they're very, very serious minded. I also feel like there's somebody here with a lot of pride and pride is disallowing them, for example, from breaching the topic, um, talking about something that has been bothering them, or even apologizing in this situation. And I feel like, you know, needless to say, there's a message here. We can't go through life like walking on eggshells, okay? It's not an, an authentic way to live. Okay? Like having to constantly watch our words, watch what we say, hold ourselves back. Uh, check ourselves. It's not an authentic way to live. And at the same time, if we don't address these issues in this connection and we go out into the world, so let's say, you know, oh, this is too complicated or this is too much. I'm going to find somebody else. If we go out and find somebody else and, for example, start dating, start seeing new people, with this Wheel of Fortune, it's basically, you know, a cycle is being repeated, right? If we run away from this connection because it's too hard or because it, it, it involves, you know, us shedding that, that pride or that layer of skin or apologizing or whatever it is that, that's making you uncomfortable and you're just like, okay, you know, um, I, I can just like cast this connection aside and go out and seek new connections with this Wheel of Fortune and this tower. It is all about cycles repeating. So I do feel here, um, you can't just go out and make new friends because the new friends are going to ask the same things of you and the same issues will start to creep up further down the line with this new group of people. And so we need to be very conscientious about, you know, uh, whatever problems we have, we want to nip it in the bud and we want to fix it because cycles have a um, way of creeping into the next relationship, the next friendship, the next work environment. So that is always why, um, you know, a lot of people would say, especially astrologers, um, people do say that we can't really run away from our problems, okay? They always have a way of creeping back up and we always can't run away from conflict or whatever dis disagreements with other people because whatever is not resolved in one relationship has a way of repeating in another relationship. And then, you know, by all means, like we can't really run away from um, conflicts with our parents because, you know, ultimately the people that we pick for our life partners will resemble our parents. And it's also a set of karmic lessons that we need to work through. So I do feel this reading is a lot about karma. And karma, not in the way that you think in that, you know, oh, if I've done badly, I will get a lot of bad things coming my way. It's not about that. It's about life lessons. It's about, you know, um, you growing as an individual and you trying to, you know, grow to your full potential. Okay. So if that means spreading yourself a little bit more or stretching yourself a little bit more on the emotional realm being emotionally expressive, um, being able to let your walls down, being able to apologize, for example. It says a lot about a person, right? And then if it means um, being strong, not being conflict avoidant, you know, this is about courage here. So working up the courage to say what needed to be said. Okay, if someone is like really annoying and they're always in your space and you've always been the nice guy and you've always let them in your space, it's time to, you know, 
work up the courage to tell them no because Gemini people you don't like to hurt other people you don't want to be mean you don't want to you know say hurtful things so it's about working the cur working up the courage to kind of maintain your boundaries right and working up the courage to tell someone off or tell someone exactly what's on your mind and I feel like there is definitely communication that needs to be had and I feel that you might not have wanted to have this conversation and I feel that the you know the energy here for February is about nudging you to work up the courage to do something that you've been avoiding doing okay I pulled out these two cards for <coughs> for the tower and we have here the Queen of Swords and the High Priestess so this is a really good combination. So the Queen of Swords, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, and the High Priestess. So the Queen of Swords is about logic, right? It's about like looking at the facts. It's about the communication aspect between two people. And this is about perception and truth. This is somebody who is um, looking for the truth, who's looking for answers, who wants to understand, who wants to make sense of the world. And with the High Priestess, it's about intuition and sacred knowledge. So this is more about, you know, psychic abilities. This is about somebody who's like operating and pot potentially fluctuating back and forth between these two concepts, okay? This is like the mind over the, the intuition. And let's just say this, and this is true of all air signs. So Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Um, if you're an air sign, you value facts. You value, you know, uh, a series of facts or factual evidence leading to a very solid and a very sound conclusion. In your world and in your mind, that makes a lot of sense because it's logical, it's rational. We, you know, don't just zing from point A to Z. We have to take all the imme immediate steps in between so fact A would take us to B and vice versa. And at the end of it, we draw a conclusion. So the world of logic and information and facts make a lot of sense to you. However, there is a situation here that is urging you to kind of like grow outside of yourself or even expand what you feel might even be possible and accept this. This is intuition. This is operating from a place of higher wisdom. Okay, we might not know all the facts, but we can make these conclusions based on what we feel, what we can't really see, but what we can perceive. And so I feel like there, there is a giant leap of faith that you need to make. And your mind is telling you, no, it's not rational or no, it's, um, it's a long stretch or no, it's all speculative. I don't know if I trust it. And so a lot of the times I just feel like for an air sign, it is really hard for you to take that plunge unless there is evidence to back it up. It's hard for you to believe another person unless they have proven themselves in some capacity. And then it is really hard for you, for example, to discern, you know, why so and so is upset with me i haven't done anything wrong unless they give you evidence right and so i just feel like if you're in if you're interacting with another person and they're not fact based the way that you are i feel that you can still convince them by showing them evidence if they're like you know on the opposite end of the spectrum you can give them evidence you can just tell them yes i care about you remember when i did that Remember that last year when I did that? Remember when that one time I took care of you, for example, okay? And so I feel like that would go a long way to kind of uh, calm them down or soothe them or reassure them. And then on the other hand, I feel, you know, these two cards appearing in conjunction with the tower. And once again, this is release and revelation, okay? I just feel like there are a lot of things here that your mind can't really, um, your mind can't make sense of it, but you're being asked to take the plunge. You're being asked in blind faith and bats are blind. And I think you got this card last month too. Um, 
it's blind faith. It's, you know, turning off the, the, the head and really working from the heart and knowing what to say, knowing what to do in a certain situation because you instinctively trust that it's going to work out well. Okay. I hope the, um, the last part wasn't too confusing because it's confusing to me. Um, anyways, I hope the reading is helpful for you as you navigate the energies of February 2020. Um, I'm hearing that, you know, this conflict over here, I feel like it's going to resolve itself by um, the March time frame. Okay, so I, I feel that things will reach a really good resolution. There will be a coming back together again. But at the same time, I feel that timing, there's like a... A small window of time here that you need to fix this situation or you need to address it or you need to you know uh, resolve it in some capacity otherwise the window of opportunity might be closed like closing and closing and the person might not be there so there's a very good opportunity here to fix this because I feel a really strong emotional connection. I just feel that the communication has been really bad, okay? And then I feel that moving forward here, this is your spiritual advice. It's telling you that, you know, you can't run away from this because there's a repeat of it waiting for you around the corner. So if you feel like oh, I'm too afraid to approach this, I'm too afraid of this person, of course you will never admit that. But if you're feeling like I'm too afraid to approach this person to talk about this, just know it's rearing its ugly head, probably in an, uh, another person at a later date, okay? So you want to fix issues now and so that we don't have repeats. And especially you don't want to carry this energy into the new year with you, okay? So Geminis, I wish you all the best. I hope that you have found some solutions from this reading. Um, I hope it resonates with you and I hope that you can, you know, find a, um, a good solution to resolve this issue. Um, I have a link in the description box below for those who are looking for private readings. I have a colleague based in California and um, she has her website up and I highly recommend that you get a reading with her. So if you or someone you know is looking for spiritual advice, um, her name is Bridget, by the way, and um, her website is very user friendly. It's easy to book a reading for yourself and you can also set your time zone and things like that. Okay, I will be back for uh, March, maybe late February. Okay, so take care of yourself and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye bye.